Hello everybody, welcome back. We are doing a Most Fearful Sacrifice by Fine Pig Games, designed by Herman Lutman. This is a how-to video on the Vassal Module, take two. This is probably actually going to be the um, distributable, yeah, distributable version of the module. I was talking to Mark Walker, we decided we'd go with six... Uh, predefined scenarios and I don't want to give away too much uh, don't like giving away free games uh, please support our hobby by uh, purchasing the game if you uh, want to play it don't just try to play for free um, I did leave a lot of uh, charts out in this just to make sure but um, I use Vassal because I don't have a lot of space but I do buy the game so I have a good collection um, but, um, most of them don't even get punched because I just don't have space to put them up right now. Um, so that's why Vassal. Now, starting on the overview pieces, and actually I'll start in the beginning. The, um, module actually defaults at 63% on the map, so you get a pretty good idea of the detail on it. That's a detail. Here's 100% right there. Um, really nice map. Um, and um, I'm glad it transferred into the, uh, the VASA module well. And I'm actually going to take that out of there. Um, I don't use that turn track anyway, but I have it set up so that the, uh, the hours show. Um, anyway, we do go up all the way to 160%. And there you have 160%. So... <laughs> Uh, unless you have a big screen TV, there's probably no reason to go up that high. But you see it is real crisp, and you get a real good detail of the map. And I'm, I'm just amazed at the uh, the detail again of this map. Um, just love them. Anyway, yes, I do use a lot of heavy artwork on these. Just artists and game designers and... Um, producers put so much effort into maps anymore that I think the only way to properly do justice to it is to make it um, as, as big as possible just so you can enjoy it even if you have to enjoy it on the screen you can probably even enjoy it more on the screen because you can blow it up some more um, anyway enough of that pieces um, VPs I don't have like I said I don't have a whole lot in the game piece palette most of it I have available through menus and on the uh, the uh, command match and we'll get to that in a little bit but i do have the vps in here when you bring them out once you're done selecting them they will not move um unless you hit the shift key and select them i also have the ability to, the ability to select the vp value it'll default at one i just had this up here to uh, i was starting the video earlier and screwed up so where still shows but the default's always one and like i said once you uh once you place it they're not going to move unless you hit shift key and then if it gets taken over by the other uh side you just go ahead and shift it and hit swap and it'll put the confederate side there um turns don't probably don't need them because i have a turn track in there now and we'll get back to that later um your cemetery hill and pick a charge artillery counters are in here um just try to keep things clean on the uh on the uh, command uh, map so we'll get to later and uh, and of course the map borders that came with the kickstarter i put those in there because i chose for the scenarios to use just the one map and then put the borders up for just because i think they really look nice and the maps are so huge that it was going to be a unwieldy uh Look at that Gettysburg detail. Uh, it was going to be an unwieldy module. And so I didn't want to have to load individual maps in for each one. So I did have them made. Um, let's see if I can pull one of those out here real quick. Um, actually do the one we're doing. A, um, a slaughter pen. There we go. That's what I was working with before. And actually, I did a little different. Um, I was starting to put, I didn't do it on that one. 
I was starting to put borders on everything too. I had that's for um, the devils to pay right there. I was going around and putting borders on everything, so that too was going to be real nice. But then I was finding the size of the module was starting to get a little big, and I decided against it. So um, you know, we just go with the. Uh, I think we got the nice uh, map borders that came with the game for the Kickstarters anyway. So um, why not use them? And then save some space on the uh, on the module. So that's the way I went. I'm trying to find one more. Yeah, there we go. Um, that's not one of my that's not one of my better ones. Um, from around the mountain. Uh, I was going to redo that one. I don't think it, I had the size right on that. I can't find, it. and it's not a big deal anyway. Regardless, they're not going to, we're not using them, so I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on that. You got your dice, Kickstarter dice are in here. When you roll, the window will come up and stay up. You can place that wherever you want. But the Confederate, same thing. It'll not only will it, uh, put the uh, the results up here, but it'll show them in the window. Um, I put a graveyard in. Uh, union up top, Confederate down the bottom. So when your units... Uh, get removed permanently that's the place to put them so you can keep track of things um, and they will I'll get to that la again later um, as we start drawing units down how that graveyard works and what it'll look like Union I have a Union and Confederate tab up here uh, the Union hand and then the Union uh, command displays the Union hand um, actually I have this one set up for um, the slaughter pen so it's only got your event cards in it and Sickles card, and Bernie, and Barnes, and the replacement general in case you need it. Well, actually, that should be up there. Um, so it's easier to, to do your cards. Uh, the event card deck, I say you can choose your two each turn. Say we want, um, I always like good ground. Good ground, unless you're on the offense, is, is, uh, is a must. I pull that one down, look at it just to make sure. Um, and let's get uh, faulty fuses to screw. The, well, they don't have artillery in this one. Um, I could have vague orders. I'll pull that one down. And then these two, we, we actually want to send them all at once, but it doesn't matter. Your opponent's not really going to be able to see what's going on. And then uh, I think it's two cards for this one. So you just go and draw two multiples, drag them down to the bottom. And send them also to card draw. As long as you don't select anywhere on here, no matter how many cards you draw on that mod multiple, no matter how much it spreads them out over here, it will send them to the card draw deck. And I'll show you where that is later. Your core card goes directly to the um, card draw deck, dude. So this is where you're going to do most of your command decision at the beginning of the turn. A uh, replacement general you don't touch unless you lose your core commander, in which case you'll switch that out for him. I leave them here, and the um, uh, the, the wounded uh, core commander in case you, you uh, roll again and they, get, they recover. So um, these your uh, division commanders will go to, and actually this could be a little funky in impulse, in not impulse, in um, scenario number one because I have these designed to send them to their priority. Um, but that'll send them to their proper um, core page, which in scenario one is not going to work because they're both they've got special rules. So you'll you'll have to do these ones on scenario one um, manually. Uh, can't be perfect. Everything's got a little compromise on it. Uh, go to the Union Command display so we can start there too. Um, I took off the the um, division casualty and I put that on the cards uh, to make it a little little clear as to who's actually wounded and that'll go with them no matter where so uh, if Bernie's wounded that would go with them no matter where and if you just want to see the back you can put that on there put everything in to be anal, anal and at the recovery you can get rid of it um, other than that let's see this is uh, I also have this is where I store the counters um, just so make it easier if you're starting a new game and you're setting your own game up it'll make it easier for you to visualize the um, makeup of each core or 
or division uh, by colors and how things work together. You got your uh, divisional or core artillery up here, your divisions down here, and um, you just set them up on the map. And anything you don't use, I made a um, box over here to put everything in. As you see, all the unused cards and all the unused units from those uh, command displays are there. But I think this will help some people that just don't quite maybe get. Uh, you're if you're new to board games, sometimes it's very difficult to get core, division, brigade, um, all that straight in your head. Uh, so I kind of think it's good to have this set up. Plus, it makes setup much easier when you can just go in here and grab the pieces. And throw them down here on the board. Um, so we got first core, second core, third core where we're actually using. So we'll bring the hand back up. And for the scenarios where you don't have mixed commands, um, sickles, so uh, you would be able to send them to the proper priority. Um, right now, yeah, it's priority one, priority two. You'll be able to do that actually from the card screen, but because if I if I were to use this guy to priority one, um, he would end up in fifth core, which is over here. So we can't do that. He's got to do manually because they are. Yeah, I'm not very good with the mouse. So I don't know what's going on. It's me. Um, fifth core. You got your same setup I do this for every every core and actually the second core uh, third core is all set up too but because I have this pre-generated scenario you will not see the troops they're all on the board and everything um, sixth core seventh core or oh, not seventh core eleventh core twelfth core and that has the artillery reserve on it which is all these counters up here kind of help you uh, visualize again um, how things work together this goes to the core, this goes for the whole army. And the Union uh, group boxes, in case you want to use the group boxes, and the broken and crushed, and we'll come back to broken and crushed in a little bit too. Um, and also, uh, Devin Gamble and Tidball for Buford's Cavalry is on here. So all the, all the, all the uh, components are available. Uh, Confederate, same thing. The Confederate hand, um, same thing. This one's set up for... Um, I'll go to card draw. Hood's the only one so that I can go to priority one. And we don't need a replacement general. I'm just going to draw two cards. These are the two we want. Uh, card draw deck and then two cards for the card draw. Oh boy, a nice little lockup. I must be doing a video. Give me a second while my uh, computer computer plays games with me. I bet you Windows is doing an update or something. This very rarely happens. It only seems to happen when I'm videoing. I may have something to do with videoing too. Ah, oh boy. I just love it. There we go. Finally, draw multiple cards. We'll go back to two. You never do what you want to do. There's a, oh, boy. Well, that's something I needed to show anyway. Uh, all of these cards, um, actually you shouldn't know that, and, and, and they, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll, I'll go in and hide these menus. That's something else I want to do when they're flipped to, the, to, flip to the upside. I'll go in and hide these menus. But on these cards, like your Rebel Yell, your Good Ground and everything, if it, if it requires a marker, you'll be able to spool that off of this, off of this card. I do want to get rid of it so you don't see what your cards are when you send them. You should be looking anyway. You're going to spoil your own fun if you do. Um, card menu. There, make a note to myself. <laughs> All right, Confederates. Go to Confederate Command Display. Same thing. You see Long Street. Uh, Hood goes to Priority One. We send him there. Uh, all his counters are gone. They saw them over there on the unused holder right here. Um, everything else is on the board. Confederate uh, Second Corps is all set up here with the uh, core, core artillery, division artillery, and the three divisions. And third division, same same thing. So you kind of get an understanding, hopefully, that how things work together. Um, and then when you need to use these, just put the counters on the board or in the reinforcement track, which I'll get to in a little bit. 
and again the Confederate groups in, in crushed and broken boxes. Um, which brings us next to the card draw box. Um, I have the Frictional Wars will be down here, and I will go over real quick. I'll, I'll load a new game into so you can see how it looks in a new game at the end here. So I had to fog a war card in, and now this draw deck's ready to go. And I would suggest, because um, you're supposed to keep one side secret that the card drawing side puts out there, not their command display, puts out there, say the Union's drawing, have your card hand here, and just draw the card deck directly to your hand so your opponent cannot see the card until you flip it over. So that way, good good, good, good option. Um, if you get like Vogue Orders and you want to hold that card, your opponent will not know what that card is. And um, that's about the only way I could make this work. Um, being able to, to see them and have alternating um, card draws. So, say we're going to draw the next card, and that turns out to be Fog of War. You put that out here so your opponent can see it. And let's bring that back down to 63 so your opponent can see it. And um, whoever rolls the dice, rolls the dice. And then when you're done, make sure you discard. Because um, that'll go to here. So, um, and even your Union Hand. You've done this. You didn't use it. You got to discard it. Make sure everything's discarded. Um, so when you're done, you hit the return cards, and everything goes back to the proper stack where it belongs. And you start all over again in the next turn. You see your Confederate hand has them back over here. And if the other ones, the CICs, and all show up in their proper decks too, as thing as scenarios get bigger. Um. Charts, not a lot of them in here. I'm trying not to give the game away. I do have the sequence of play so you can remember where you're at. A little arrow in here to kind of remind you where you're at. Combat results, quite proud of this one. Um, this is movable, um, but um, I don't recommend moving it by hand. Um, set it with the, the uh, buttons up here. Um, this is your home button. We'll take it back to one every time. But I made this, um, eh, let's say we got a, a fire value of four. Now you don't have to try to like scroll over, get like me, especially if you're over here looking at something. You don't have the, the um, reference point. So um, it's nice to have this little slider keep things clean for you. Um, the other thing is, is uh, we're down here looking at our shift columns. You can't see that slider. So we got a, a shift column left because they're in the Rocky Woods. We're going to hit it once left. Um, we are targets in good ground. Gone two. That's a good point right here. Um, it will not go below one. And it will not go above um, this line right here, the uh, four, five stars. So uh, let's see. We're on good ground. Let's say we've got... Uh, Targets mounted cavalry. We're going to go back over one. And then we got, um, yeah, hell, we're firing canister at them. There we go. Probably never going to happen. Canister and good ground. But you get an idea. So why you can't even see this, this is still working. Um, though I would suggest keeping track in your head kind of where you're at. So, um, see, if you're starting at four, you want to try to get all your positive modifiers done first to draw it up this way. Um, so you don't bottom out and then lose some modifiers. Everything's a compromise. Um, but anyway, that's, as you see, it's a lot easier to do all this, not being able to see it. You just got to kind of keep an eye on where you're at because um, you don't want to lose the column shifts. Uh, terrain effects is the only other one I have in here. And um, it's self-explanatory. I use that a lot. Probably get used to it as I play it more. I haven't had a whole lot of chance to play yet. Notes, put notes in here, public, private, so you can keep track of what you're, uh, you, when you're playing your multiplayer games, so you can see um, where you're at, talk to each other, whatever, leave notes for each other if you're um, between saves, whatever. Um, I like having that in there. Turn tracker. Did add the turn tracker in. I have the dates up here. They're clonable. 
setting your own game up, I like to set the, uh, you'll notice in all my pre-games, pre, predefined setups that I have the, uh, the date before the starting and after the ending time so you know what your turn is. Uh, nothing fancy here other than just the counter, just to move around. Um, reinforcements, this is what I put in to kind of make things, keep things a lot less cluttered. And this will start out pretty well zoomed out. I'm at uh, 40%. And this is actually, uh, I have one for each day. So when you're playing the big game, you put all your reinforcements in here for each particular day. And clean those, um, clean those command uh, displays up for when you need them. And we will go to turn entry 2 because, uh, turn track 2 because that's where the reinforcements are. And you see right here we got Iyer's. Ayers coming in with Weed and Martin at um, 5 o'clock, as is Law. So all those are staged in the 2 o'clock position for this scenario. Kind of helps remember to pull things and uh, keep them out of the way until you need them. And then, of course, the unused, when you have unused, uh, make sure I've got... I do recommend going in here to your file and preferences and bringing this up above 500 because these maps are huge and they will cause some delays and the more automation you put in the more it um, the more it um, the more it slows things down so uh, there you have it this is where you put all your unused the cards just put I have the one big slide outline in there and then you can just throw the pieces anywhere. So you're just to get them out of your way so the, the card's clean. Uh, screenshot, if you choose to make a screenshot, LOS, uh, important. Uh, red line gives you the range. Uh, should be center dot to center dot. The only time it doesn't do that in Basel is if you make, um, you can turn that off or if you make the edges legal. I do that. I did that in combat, so you've got to be careful in combat. Uh, your zoom controls and uh, this will take remove all your action orders this will hide all the pieces so you can see see it takes the VP over here off and I gave an overview map um, so you get a good idea of uh, everything in the overview you can easily go to where you want to where you want to be um, just give you an idea how cool this map is and the work that went into it and I really like the uh, the border markers too um, anyway quit, quit BS Greg as you see I have the scenario set up over here um, on the on the count cards the, the counters uh, you can turn a movement trail on or off um, blue for Union and um, brown for Confederate. I don't use it. It's a light brown. I yeah, maybe I may, maybe I need to change that because you can barely see that. It was a nice thought making it brown, but maybe I'll change that. Um, or maybe just make it wider. I could make it wider, then you can see it easy. Um, the other thing on the counters is uh, Union infantry. Well, they they all turn. It, really don't need to but if you like your counters facing the way they're actually facing to show their frontage in this game it doesn't doesn't matter too much um, so but I made them available to turn status full strength battle worn just kind of triggers you back and forth from your sides uh, shaken all units shaken you're crushed if you hit crushed it's going to send you up to your crushed box which we had talked about earlier right there and um, your broken box, if you, if you send them to the broken, will go to the broken box. This brings me to, if you are in the crushed box and you fail, and you would lose your guy. Oops, it's not a state, you're not uh, shaken. Get rid of that. Um, unit eliminated. We'll send him the graveyard. And if you get enough of them, and I forgot to fix that too moved it doesn't really matter the move marker is not going to hurt you in the uh, graveyard but i can get rid of that um if you say ward went also um eliminated he would be next it just automatically will stack them where they belong um 
Confederates. We'll go down to the bottom. So at the end of the game, you can come in here and easily count up your uh, VPs for casualties. Um, let's see what else we got here. Hasty works. Um, hasty works to do the hasties, and then you got to build breastworks off the hasties. Uh, and uh, they again will not move unless you hit shift um just I, I find that things are a lot easier to do that you can also build your breastworks off of that except for cavalry cavalry will if you drop a hasty works with cavalry you will notice you cannot build breastworks off of that one and breastworks once you get breastworks there's really nothing you can do that stays there for the rest of the game so I, you don't have the ability to delete it or anything else. It'll just be there. Um, Union. They also have the skirmish order. Uh, you'll already use that in your setups. But it's there. Um, Confederates won't have it. Mark move. And assault. If you want to have the assault marker out to show who's assaulting who. I'll put that in there. I may make some kind of an engagement. Um box or something i don't know it's i don't want to get too involved in this either you don't have it on the board game I, I try to stay as true to the board game as possible when i make my modules after all we play board games because we like board games not computer games um confederates are all the same Ex oh I, I, I did forget that except they do not have the skirmish because uh, Confederates don't get the skirmish in this game. If it ever adds in, that'll be a quick add. The other thing is orders, and I'm glad I flashed that. Um, when you get activated, you'll put, uh, say, this brigade got attack orders. You'll put your orders down here. That'll show you that they're activated. I recommend leaving them on there to show that they're activated. Because um, there are some cards that say uh, that haven't been activated, so that's a good way to remind you who has been activated. At the end of the turn, they'll all remove by hitting that, or you can. Um, I think I have a control R on that. I probably ought to, I probably ought to put that in there in case, because there's I know there's a couple of uh, instances where you can activate the same brigade twice. Um, just you can change your orders; it doesn't matter. You, it doesn't matter. Um, the, uh, remove all moved markers is up here also. Artillery. Um, there is no artillery in this one yet. You'd have to go into the uh, reinforcements to bring them in. Let's bring him out real quick. And um, actually, yeah, no hasty works. Um, I came in here for orders just to show. You. Okay, your artillery moved and moved and fired. Um, for your to keep track of whether you've moved or fired that artillery because you can't do both. So that counters right there. Their orders are fire, movement, rally, but the same thing. Um, it's going to show a nice little parchment. Kind of looks like uh, Civil War orders, maybe. I get a little late. No, I do that sometimes. Um, and I'll get out a cavalry unit too. We'll just go to the Union and, and get out the cavalry unit and show their orders and everything too. Because they're slightly different. The orders are the same, but the status is not. Um, they can place the hasty works, as I said earlier. But on their hasty works, you don't have the option to build the... Uh, breastworks so um i think that's it mounted dismounted basically just gonna flip your flip your card over and um that's it for the counters I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that's uh necessary to explain that you guys might need to know you make these things, and to you, it's all obvious. You've got it all there, and then you play it uh, like a month or two later, and you're like, damn, I should have mentioned that so people know that. Um, 
yeah, I think that's it. We'll go ahead and close this game out. I'm going to load a new up just to show you what everything will look like fresh. Um, go in there and hit solitaire. Or I, I do have it set up so the opponents can't see the uh, the um, the hand. So if we were to retire and come into this union, if I try to go in the confederate, you can see the command displays, but you can't see the confederate hand. Uh, same if we go to... Con, uh, Confederates, um, we'd not be able to see the Union hand, but we'd be able to see the Confederates. Just there's not much hidden in this game, so I didn't do it to the counters, um, but I did do it to the, um, and I left actually I left the counters for a reason because you're supposed to move things around. The same with the uh, dis command displays, you're supposed to move things around according to some cards on your opponent's sheet to mess up their plans so that's why you're able to see them um, no cheating anyway blank map um, all your command displays are completely filled with the different units so if you want to see what the unit actually looks like to refresh your memory you can see that all the different units are completely filled uh, the Union hand, actually we can't see because we're Confederate, Confederate hand, you see has all the uh, events, all the core cards, including Jackson's on it, um, all the uh, division commanders, the CIC, and all the replacement generals. So if we go to the Union, it has all the CICs, all the replacements, uh, Buford, Tyler, um, all the divisionals, all the cores, and all the events. Um, so when you start out fresh, all your cards and stuff are here. Your reinforcements and your unused are all empty. And that box will actually show completely if you're at 100% or higher. But then you vassal. Weird things happen when you zoom and unzoom. Um, so I think basically that is it. That's the overview happy with the way the module turned out there's a couple of tweaks I'm going to do as I go around and um, uh, play test this but uh, that will be the uh, overview and there will be up here in the user's guide a how-to video right now it links to the old video but it will link to this one so I hope you guys all enjoy this is uh, a most fearful sacrifice by flying pig games designed by Herman Lutman and uh, you all have a great day or a great night. Thanks for joining me.